Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. So there's a, a big argument brewing about USB 3.0 versus Thunderbolt. But it's, it's my understanding that, yes, while the ports are different, theoretically... They, they, this, this gap may be balanced in some capacity. Right. So you could have a USB to Thunderbolt adapter. Okay. Which would solve a large number of the issues of which do I get? Wait, USB to Thunderbolt or Thunderbolt to USB or either? The computer would be Thunderbolt and the device would be USB okay. 3. Okay. You cannot go from Thunderbolt device to USB 3. Three port, port okay. because Thunderbolt is so much faster and has so many more requirements. Kind of like you can't have a gigabit USB 2 device. You, know, you can have a gigabit NIC card, but it, if you attach it to USB 2, USB 2 doesn't have a gigabit of data, doesn't work. Right. So Thunderbolt has 10 gigabits of capacity, and has that across multiple channels. So in theory, you could have 80 gigabits of capacity on your Thunderbolt. USB 3 is nowhere near that. In fact, most implementations of USB 3 top out at 400 megabits, you know, not even gigabit. So then why would we even have USB 3 now that Thunderbolt's kind of taking off? I mean, I understand USB 2 for legacy, but probably what will happen is we'll have a lot of USB 3 ports so that we've got the legacy for USB 1 and 2 devices. And most new devices will start being Thunderbolt devices. Um, because of the engineering requirements, we may see USB hang out for a little while longer. You know, if, if you've been making printers with USB ports, converting that to be a Thunderbolt port maybe too challenging. And then Thunderbolt really kind of is limited to eight ports and USB 3 supports 64 or 128. I don't remember which, but more than I would need and more than you would right. need. And you can plug hubs into hubs into hubs into hubs so you can actually get to this almost... A theoretical... Well, there, it is a limit. a very but, large yeah. limit, but... Um, the Thunderbolt hubs, you're just going to start killing off a large portion of the functionality when you get beyond <coughs> that number of addressable devices. Really? So if you had, <clears throat> let's say, if, the, if it could only support, say, a Thunderbolt port, port at an Apple's implementation could only support two channels, could you plug in a hub that had four channels? Or would you still be limited to 20 gigabits? You're, you're going to be limited to 20 gigabits, okay. and the... The devices may or may not like that. Yeah. You, you, you know, like I, I, like, I, it's kind of like plugging in a USB device and not having enough power. Well, or have you ever plugged in a USB 1 device into a USB 2 hub and all of a sudden the USB 2 hub switches into USB 1 mode and all of your devices right. have to be USB 1 and suddenly your webcam doesn't start working? Right. So what you can do and what works may not be the same thing. Yeah. I, I've actually gone as far as I've, I've had problems with the USB ports on my Mac Pro uh, early 2008, and apparently it's an issue with all of the Mac Pros from early 2008, and my USB ports one by one have just been failing. Like, just, it, it just doesn't work anymore. And I'm down to, I've stripped away everything except for, I've got a, a keyboard, a wired keyboard, and a webcam. Those are the only two USB devices I'm using at this point. I've, I've like, cleared my life of USB devices. My printer is all wireless scanning wireless printing, like, I am trying to untether or detether my life. I mean, even even USB storage is just, it's temporary, and most of that happens to exist on the network. Yeah, I mean, USBs and connected devices are starting to go away, but we're also getting larger amounts of data, which is why Thunderbolt right. matters. If, if you want to move a 100 gigabyte video file, it's really slow over your Wi-Fi. Yeah, no doubt. 